and a very warm welcome to Bharata First. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. You're watching FRP Explains. Over the last four days, I've been telling you about what is wrong with the system, how we need to watch out for whom we are friends with and whom we are not, what is going wrong, and how do we change to become a better society. Today, I'm not going to talk about change, but I'm going to talk about something positive and how the moment we hear that this organization has stepped in, we can breathe a sigh of relief. In these difficult and challenging times, it is the Indian Armed Forces which has come to the fore to rescue us once again. The Army has decided to step in and try to remedy the situation that we are in right now, all doing of our own and of course because of the failure of several governments, both the state and the centre. In March 2021, it was the health minister himself who came out on record and said that coronavirus endgame is here and we are going to see the end of it very soon. I didn't know that he meant it would be the end of us. General Naravne has said that the army is going to open up its hospitals for civilians so that beds can be used by the civilians and they can be treated in this grave time and in this hour of need. Every time we've been in trouble, every time there has been a situation like this, it has always been the armed forces that have come to our aid and have come to our rescue. Whenever the system has failed, the armed forces have picked up the pieces and ensured that we can jump back and bounce back. It is not their duty, it is not their job. Their job is to keep us safe on the border. But yet, whenever there is a situation like this and whenever called for and whenever the need arises, the army has stepped in. We have to salute them. They are the true heroes. Eki dil hai aur bar bar jitate hai. And that's what's so amazing about them. And, when, and you know, as a society, as a public, as citizens of this country as well, we feel so much more at ease. We can breathe a sigh of relief when we know that the armed forces are stepping in and taking control and doing something for the society because track record and history has shown us that whatever it is that they do they do excellently well maybe there is a leaf for us to take out as far as the other organizations and institutions of the government are concerned where whatever the army is doing is working so why can't we replicate it or try and use this model elsewhere too so that we have a well-oiled machine. So what is it that the army is doing? One, they are providing manpower wherever it is required, especially while dealing with the imported oxygen cylinders, where it has to be dealt with very delicately and where specialized manpower is required. The army is ensuring that they provide it there to handle the oxygen as well as transport it. That is one. Second, the army has set up a COVID-19 facility at the old command hospital in Pune, and taking care of civilians there. The army has helped in setting up a 900 bed facility in Ahmedabad, Gujarat, a 100 bed isolation facility in Bamir, Rajasthan. Similar efforts have been made in multiple places in Madhya Pradesh as well, especially in Bhopal and Gwalior. The army has said that it is willing to provide all possible help and go out of the way to help its civilian brothers and sisters to try and ensure that we come out of this second wave of pandemic. And it's not just the army, even the Navy is helping out. The Navy has opened up its facilities in Mumbai where we've seen that uh, the coronavirus pandemic has reared its ugly head and has uh, devoured the entire state and especially uh, the city as well. In Karwar, they are helping out migrant laborers and set up something of a 1,500 uh, bed facility so that they can rest there, they can pro be provided with rations and they don't have to go back to their, uh, to their hometowns. Similar kind of an arrangement has been made in Goa as well. Apart from this, of course, the armed forces are working tirelessly to set up uh, temporary establishments all across the country to try and ensure that uh, more and more people can be treated there and uh, some relief can be given to them. All this at a time when we've seen across the country, especially in 10 states, 
the number of oxygen beds and the number of ICU beds have only come down. We seem to have been better prepared for the first wave of the pandemic with, you know, the right kind of messaging, with the right kind of temporary establishments that we have we had put up to try and contain the pandemic. But somehow, during the second wave of the pandemic, everything that we did, despite having early warning signs that the situation could go out of control, we didn't do anything about it. Niti Aayog has been saying right from October 2020, that there could be a time in the near future where we'll see one and a half lakh cases per day. That has gone up to more than three and a half lakh cases now. That's a different matter. But it is not right to say that we didn't know and we were caught by surprise. Clearly, there were warning signs. This double mutant variant that we are talking about, which has devastated us, has been going around way back in October in Maharashtra. And ever since, we've just opened up completely. We've thrown caution to the wind. We've had uh, multiple gatherings, we've had elections, we've had rallies, we've had so many other things happening, just not paying heed to the advice of the experts. I understand that we are still in the midst of the second wave and a lot of damage has been done and continues to happen. But we also need to look into the future and plan ahead. The reason why we saw the second wave was because we did not plan, we let our guard down. There will be a third wave. We need to be better prepared going forward and I hope that we learn some lessons from what we've seen over the last month and a half or so. Maybe the armed forces can show us the way and we can lead. Once again, I salute the true heroes of Bharata for doing such a fantastic job and letting us breathe a sigh of relief. Whenever the army steps in, there is a sense or there's a feeling inside where we can say, we are in safe hands. They come down as guardian angels and protect us. They've been doing it for several years now. They've been doing it day in and day out, time and again, only to keep us safe. Let us salute them today. On that note, I'm going to take your leave. But remember, if you like this content, please subscribe, hit the bell icon and like the video. Also, that is a contribution link for those of you who want to come forward and contribute to keep this content alive. You may do so. Thank you once again and see you again next time.